Well, good evening. Welcome to our Wednesday night service here at Faith Baptist Church, 3794 Oleander Avenue. Uh, we're glad that you joined us, and we're trusting that God will be a, uh, use me to be a blessing, use the preaching to be a blessing to you today. This is our normal prayer service. We're going to begin our service today by reading off our prayer list. It's quite lengthy. A lot of folks on here, probably some we don't know about, needs to be prayed about. And as we find out who they are, we'll do that. Let me begin reading by uh, begin the meeting by reading our prayer list. We have a number on here. Uh, one is Dick Snook, good friend of this church, who has a problem with some prostate cancer. We're praying God would heal him. Rick Gonzalez with his health, and uh, Nina Step with her health. Grover Step with his health. Alyssa Hunter with chemotherapy. Jeff Brown with a kidney transplant. Gary Baker, Kitty Rogers with health. Jimmy Queen, who's on active military service. Jack Haldeman with seizures. Scott Mitchum, ongoing health problems in his house. Uh, Andy Perrell and family. Marie Gillette with their health. Uh, Bobby Milner with his health. Mackenzie Pauley was home and in therapy at this time. Pastor Randy C Casey with heart issues. Wanda with uh, health, that's uh, Shirley's niece. Jackie Rose with I had a uh, heart catheterization. Calvin's family, Greg Sweeney with cancer. Michelle with her health. Justin Henshaw with health problems. Jane Dalton with health. Francis uh, Nicholas, Pastor and Mrs. Vernon uh, Antonis. Bill and Kathy Caffo with their health. Catherine Willis, that's the mother of Kathy Caffo. She's 97 years old and has uh, some problems. Colin, a uh, four year old with leukemia. Uh, Louise Davis is in hospice care. Carol Scott, the niece of Imogene and her health. Jason Waldron, recovering from an accident. Jonathan Waldron with lung cancer. They're on Shirley Bonifacius with their health. Pastor and Mrs. Carl Fuentes with uh, their health. Karen Garnett, health, that's a friend of Larissa's. Um, my wife and myself, Athen, baby with liver cancer. Marcia Fulton, pa uh, Parkinson's disease, that's a friend of Imogene's. Sharon Stout, waiting on results of a bone marrow biopsy. Oh, they got results, and it came back negative. That's a wonderful thing. There's no sign of cancer in her body. And so that's a praise, not a prayer, but a praise. And then uh, uh, Brother Chris Cherry, a good friend of mine, whose wife passed away a few days ago, and her two daughters and two sons. We're praying for them and God's comfort in their life. Joel with rehab and certainly more surgeries to go. As Charlotte Henshaw's granddaughter. Pastor Tim Raines has been in a coma since October 2018. That's a long time. We're praying God's will be done there. Larissa's family, the Lakewood Park uh, home, the city of Fort Pierce, certainly need wisdom at this time, and the group home that Larissa's part of. President Trump, Congress, United States government, all those things are important. The Bible instructs us to pray for those in authority. And then, of course, the armed forces all over the world who are standing in the defense of our way of life. And then the Hodges, Dr. and Mrs. Hodge up in West Virginia, their health. We're glad to report they're doing pretty good at this point. And the Hodges' great-granddaughter, Little Blake, she was born a lot early and has many, many problems, but seems to be doing uh, better at this time. Kim Krusko and her health, she has ongoing health problems. The Sonia Hodge with ongoing health problems. Uh, Ann with esophageal cancer, Florence Capel with health, Louise Temples with cirrhosis, uh, Leela Oates and her health has some heart problems, Mark Hall with cancer, Carolyn Hollinger with her health, Shannon's daughter Angel is getting better but still needs some prayer, and Shannon herself and her family, Anthony Leo, Shannon's brother, is in need, uh, need of help, Sarah Janetti, health, Tim Ecker, health, Lorraine's son, Rob, and Bob DeSalvio, her father, all those need help. But Bob is 91 years of age and uh, still kicking, but has uh, kidney failure, has had it for a long time. Mitchum, the family, the Christian, Lorraine's health, Lorraine Young's health, I should say. Lynn Hall, who's in, um, in care and uh, um, needs, uh, needs prayers. Brother Sal Navarro, who's been dealing with the eye issue for a long time, his wife, Pam. John Walston, Jared, and Jacob Lang, uh, pray for them. Tied our family. Author Spells with Cancer, Kay with Health, Claude Cooper, Health, Patty Walston with Health, 
Max uh, Bourbon, leukemia, and uh, thank the Lord is in remission. Russell Anderson, Brother Russell Anderson, of course, well known in our circles. Right for him, he's getting a little older. Gina Tichnell with her health. Leanne Britton with her health. Reagan, a three-year-old who has pneumonia. Uh, Josh Cancer, another friend of Carolyn Hollinger's. And Dr. and Mrs. Tom Milam, be hearing from him in just a moment, but keep them in prayer and ongoing health issues for them. And uh, let's see, we go to the back and it says uh, during this time of the uh, coronavirus, coronavirus and those affected, we want to remember those a lot, a lot of people being in, affected by this, not only in health wise, but financially as well. I want to pray this God would use this time to reach many uh, with the gospel that many will be saved, turn to him because of the ongoing problems and shows the brevity of life and the uncertainty of life and a lot of folks living in fear today. So we pray that many will be saved. And then we have a great list. We'll not mention those on our salvation list. Then we have some missionaries, Bob Morello, missionary to Guadalajara, Mexico. He uh, actually began treatment for tuberculosis um, and had to do that three months, getting near the end of that, I think. And then he's going to have a kidney transplant. So ongoing problems there. Matt and April Fraser, they're like a lot of missionaries who are on deputation. And this time it's hard to do anything. All the churches have canceled their meetings. And Stephanie Westco, a missionary, Paul and Gail, Gail Tipton, they're back from Nicaragua because they want to be in a place where she can be treated if she has health problems. And then the ministries here at Faith Baptist Church, um, the FBC publications, been pretty busy uh, here lately. And we need volunteers. You don't have anything to do. Most of you don't now, as a matter of fact. And there's not a lot of people here. You can come here if you're if you're free. Your temperature's not too high. You can come and volunteer and work here. And then the Cuba and Haiti projects uh, that need to be prayed for, ongoing projects. And then a big one for the French shop is the new binder. We need the new glue binder. It's about a hundred and fifty or sixty thousand dollars, and some of you already given to that. If you have a hundred thousand dollars laying around, you want to donate it. That would be greatly appreciated. And the radio station, WBOF, and this time has even strained the radio because of the internet being overwhelmed. And the Faith Preaching Channel, God bless that. The Soul Winning and Visitation Program uh, was doing our best to reach out in other ways from, than uh, door knocking. And we're hoping to get back to door knocking pretty soon. And we have some shut-ins, the Evans family, uh, Tom and his wife, who've been watching by uh, internet for a long time. Lynn Hall, we mentioned her already. She's in need of, um, uh, she has a great many health problems, I think cancer and a few other things, and she's a shut-in to pray for them. Then we have some college students. Most of them are home or not in college at this time. We'll mention their names anyway. And that is uh, Nathan Snyder, Alyssa Boer, Katie Britton, David and Sarah Mitchum, Kayana Valentin, Aust uh, Ashlyn Lang, and Elizabeth Branch, all uh, college students, um, like most other college students, are out of college at this time. And there's some special projects going on. We're working on air conditioning, adding some air conditioning here in the sanctuary, and a few more LED lights, uh, fixtures to be changed as well. So God knows all about these, and we want to pray and ask his specific blessing on these we've mentioned tonight. And many others that come to our mind are not on our list. So let's pray together. Father, we ask your blessing today. May you meet our needs in a wonderful way. We think about these folks, Lord, uh, on our, um, uh, who are really in need of um, recovery from different health problems. But Lord, beyond that, uh, there's some on here, uh, Lord, we don't know their, their state. We don't know how many are saved, and that's the most necessary thing. And whatever else happens, Lord, if they're not saved, then it's all for naught. So I pray, Lord, if there's one or more on this list that we're, praying about, Lord, that uh, you'd send someone. Uh, may the gospel reach their ears, and may they be open to it and trust you as their Lord and Savior. We pray your will be accomplished in each life that was mentioned. Help us, Lord, to do all we can to meet their needs as well. We thank you for loving us and caring for us. Thank you even during this uh, time of great stress that's going around the world, uh, Lord, that will show people how vulnerable they are, how tenuous life is that they may come to know you as their Savior and may open their hearts and see their need of being sure heaven's their home when they draw their last breath. Bless those that care for us and our health ministries and so on. And we're going to thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do, not only uh, through the prayer that we're doing today, 
Let's hear the message you're about to hear from Brother Bilam. Bless him as he comes now with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. We're glad to have Brother Tom Milam with us. He couldn't go to West Virginia and stay because everything's canceled. But we're not canceled here. We're glad to go on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, Brother Tom, come and give it to us. Amen. <coughs> amen. Bless the Lord. It's what a good place to be. Amen. The world thinks that church is shut down. But church is not a particular business. Church is the people. And so it's hard to shut down the people. The people still worship. Amen. The fact that we can't get to the church house and gather up as usual uh, has nothing to do with the church shutting down or going on. The church is doing very well. Some places are having to shut down a little, but the church is doing perfectly well. Amen. We thank God for that. And thank God for Brother Tom Berg, Brother Mike uh, in the studio. And uh, this is a little different, but uh, I should be used to this for several years, preached on, preaching on the radio. And, uh, but we do have an audience out there, those online and the live feeds and so on and so forth. And we bless the Lord for the privilege. And what it ought to do is drive us closer to the cross of Calvary, closer to what he did for us. It should drive us closer to pray. And more prayer is being done now probably than has been done for many years for a lot of people as we pray for one another concerning of what is going on in our country right now and around the world. And so we're here, and we bless the Lord for that. And you that have your Bibles and can get to your Bible, and I'm sure that you're ready for Wednesday service. You have your Bible laying there handy. If you will, look with me in 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Let me read you some scripture. And in light, this is kind of in light of a lot of stuff that's going on, the consolation that we have for every Christian. But if you go with me, and I'd like to read starting with verse 1 of chapter 1 in 2 Timothy. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. Greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in, the, in my, thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice. And I am persuaded that in thee also. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to life through the gospel. I'd like to focus on verse 9, if you would please. It's where I bring the message from. That God uh, put on my heart a couple of weeks ago while uh, studying a lot on prayer, Begin to study an awful lot, and it drove me to so many different places to bring messages uh, that, uh, that prayer will take us to and how we got into this thing. Amen? But uh, look at verse 9 one more time. Who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Father, in Jesus' name, there will definitely be no preaching 
lest the Holy Ghost gives unction. Would you, Lord God, show yourself plain that folks might hear, that I might listen and focus upon the subject, and Lord, to use us to your honor, glory, and praise. Save us soul, strengthen the brethren. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And as we look into the verse 9 and we think about uh, what a prayer focuses on, amen, whatever a prayer focuses on, that's what power falls on. And when we think about that, the Christian life is more walk than talk. And so it's all that, but it is more walk than talk. But I want to show us five things to which a born-again believer is called. You see that phrase there, we are called. We are, somebody says, uh, well, I'm not called to do so, and I'm not called to sing, I'm not called to preach, I'm not called, but we're all called. I promise you that. You got called or you didn't get in. And I'm glad that he calls. He calls out, and, and we're not only called out, but we're called into something, praise God. That makes all the difference in the world. I want you to notice five particular calls that every Christian will experience. Number one is conversion. Number two would be communion. Number three would be consecration. Number four is compensation. Number five is a coronation. And you all got called, and we all got called into that. And I'll bring you more details about that. But by way of instruction, of inter introduction, and yes, instruction also, but by way of introduction, you see, our, our calling begins with the call of the gospel by the working of the Holy Spirit, the conversion by faith. What God works in by His grace, He'll also work through and out of us by extending His grace and His power. Hallelujah. You say, well, I don't have power to do so and so. I don't have the power to strength to do so. Depend on the Lord just the same as, as what you got when you got saved. Philippians chapter 2, in verse 12, the latter part of that verse says, work out your own salvation with, with fear and trembling. Doesn't mean what a lot of people think it means because the answer is in verse 13. For it is God which worketh in you to will and to do of His good pleasure. Praise God, if it wasn't for that, we'd be all in a mess. I'm going to tell you right now, we've got to trust in Him. It's by faith. That this whole thing by faith. How do you think we overcome the coronavirus or, or any other virus? What about the virus of sin? It's overcome by faith. Amen. It is impossible to please God without faith. Hallelujah. That's why we get in. That's why we operate. And that's how we get out of here. And that's how we'll live the rest of our life one day. Faith will end and we'll see him, the one that suffered, bled, and died for our sins. There in the glory world, we'll see Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. I'm telling you, for it's God which worketh in you both the will and to do of his good pleasure. Revelation 4 and 11 says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. So listen, folk, isn't that something to think about? You were created to please him. I was created to please the Lord. Everything we set out to do when we get saved should be to please the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God that he made a way that we could even have that thought and have that demeanor and live that life and go through this life, a life of faith, glory to God. I'm glad when somebody says, Tom, that's all you're going to do is just go around and go to church and have faith in God. I said, that's it, buddy. That's all I'm going to do. Amen. And I slip up on that even sometime. So then you know, I want you to think about it when it tells us that, amen? So if we're called out of darkness, we're also called into light, amen? Because light tears darkness all to pieces. It's so wonderful that light, amen, comes and darkness will flee immediately. Just a little speck of light will guide your way. Hallelujah, that's amazing. See, there's a lot of little dark spots in the world. They don't bother you at all. But you put a little light somewhere where it's dark. 
You will follow that light. Get lost in a coal mine where I spent 30 years. I'll tell you right now, you get turned around so fast, you think you well, You think you know your way around. But boy, you don't work till you see some light. But the instant you see light, everything comes clear. Hallelujah. I saw the light. Amen. That's not just a song. Praise God. That's a lifestyle. I saw the light. That light is Jesus Christ. So we're called out of darkness. We're also called into light. And the apostle Paul preaching to the, to the Gentiles uh, uh, there said in uh, Acts chapter 26 verse 18, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among whom which are sanctified by faith. That is in me. Paul said, I have no brag except Jesus Christ and what he's done in me. I have no brag about anything except the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah, what a Savior. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4 teaches us that it calls us, he calls it this, the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God. Isn't that good? Praise God. That ought to stir you up today. That ought to put a little, put a little butter on your toast. Amen. That'll help you. So Ephesians chapter 4, verse 8 says, For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the world. Walk as children of light. Hallelujah. I'm glad when somebody says, Tom, are you still preaching? Now that used to make me mad. I used to get on my nerves. I'd say, Tom, are you still going to church? Are you st-? As if I was going to stop somewhere like they did. Generally, that's the reason I asked the question. Isn't that sad? Now, not everybody does that. But they ask, are you still preaching? If they ain't seen you for a while. And man, I used to, I'd say, well, what in the world? I'd get a little bit upset. I'd say, what in the world do you think I'm going to do? So I say it more gentler than that anymore. And I say, yes, praise God, I'm still preaching. I'm still trying to tell it. You know why? Because God, I'm, I'm a child of light. I'm going to talk about the light. I don't like to talk about darkness, but we got to mention darkness because there's a contrast. Hallelujah. There's a negative and a positive. Listen, 1 John chapter 1, verse 7 says, But if ye walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. Amen. Everything, past, present, and future. I said that one time to a group of fellows, and I saw one fellow's mouth move. He said, I don't believe that. And when I did, I keyed in on his face, and I looked him in the eye, and I got down real close to him, and I began to say, Mister, if all your sins are not forgiven, you are not forgiven at all. And he got a little better after that, amen? Isn't it good? Our sins, when we recognize and we get that forgiveness from the Lord, our sins are gone. Glory to God, our sins are gone. Amen. I want you to notice now five calls, and we'll be done. Five calls that every Christian experiences, whether they'll acknowledge, acknowledge it or not. But they will acknowledge it because if you're a true born-again believer, you mean business with God, you cannot hide it. I double-dog dare you to try to hide it. You can't hide now, you might have some doubts, and you may be have a few fears, and a lot of things happen when you first saved. But let me tell you something. There are some calls in your life that you cannot hide. Number one, we see at conversion, we were called what? Out of darkness, glory to God. Hey, man, to walk in the light. In 1 Peter chapter 3, uh, uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, yes. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people that to that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. See, the Jewish people were all tore up in that day about what to do, how to do it, what about the ordinances, what about this, what about what about holy days, what about this, this and that, and, and all of the, all these kind of things. And here comes somebody preaching flat in their face, you must be born again. It threw them out of whack. But once they got it, they got it just like you got it. Amen. Praise God, but because he came to us. Amen. He came to all that will listen and hear him. And in John chapter 8, in relation to that, shows us the light of the world hanging in sheer darkness. 
Right now it seems that things are gloomy around us with this virus and all this that's going on and such a change in our behavior, such a change that we have having to do things quite different, not assembling together in a lot of places and a lot of things like that. And, and uh, you know, it's a good thing, personally speaking and, and medically speaking, it's a good thing to keep bad things away from us. And God would have us to adjust and readjust. But in the meantime, let it push you toward the cross like you've never seen it before. Remember, there's still room at the foot of the cross for us to fall down, lay down our petitions. The mercy and grace that is there. Amen. So at conversion, praise God, we came out of darkness into light. And then number two, for communion. Oh, I like communion, don't you? I like communion. And guess what? That's unto fellowship. Our communion comes as a result of our fellowship, and our fellowship becomes as a result, as a result of us gathering together. And that's in jeopardy right now of gathering together a whole bunch of folk and all of that kind of thing. But we can still have the same communion because we can have communion within ourselves, just us and God Almighty. You lock a Christian away in a cave where he can't see anybody and he'll find somebody, a friend that'll stick closer than a brother. He, we are never alone. We are never forsaken. Pray, I've heard that said since this virus. Said, well, it looks like you Christians got forsaken. No, Lord, have mercy. No, we ain't never been forsaken of the Lord. So when we have communion. We have fellowship one with another in a little different way. But we still have fellowship. Aren't you glad for that? By way of cyberology, by way of technology, by way of many other facets we never thought of much before until now. Now we've found some new gimmicks, if you want to say. We found some new things to do to get the Word of God out. Hallelujah. So, no, you can't stop the church. The church is going on. Church is doing well. Church is going out, it's going on, it's going up, amen. I'm telling you. And so for communion, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9, God is faithful by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, to serve the Lord in what? What do we, what do we, how, what do we serve the Lord in? Heart, mind, body, and soul, amen. Can't stop the Christian. You might can stop his influence in a variety of different ways. You might can halt him. You might can hinder him. But you cannot stop the true Christian because he knows he's born again. Hallelujah. And he's going on for the Lord Jesus Christ. See, it's not just a ceremony, this thing of communion. Not just a ceremony of taking a piece of bread and a cup of grape juice. That's not just a ceremony. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, that is, it's a life of reliance not a religion of works. It's a life of relying on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I have an audience here today. It's a big audience. Amen. Now, just a couple people. <laughs> but boy, it's wonderful to sense and know the calling of the Holy Spirit of God for communion unto fellowship. Praise God. So don't get caught up in so many ceremonies as you would in the one that called. That's like Moses when he came down off the mountain about the, the Ten Commandments. He came down and he had a glow about him. And everybody looked at him and said, whoa, God's on that guy. Look at that. He'd been up the mountain with God. But he didn't come off the mountain bragging on the miracle of a burning bush. He came off the mountain bragging on the God of the miracle of the burning bush. You see? Amen. God heals. But I'm not going to praise a healer. I'll praise God for healing. Amen. That irks some people, and that's all right. Praise God. You need to be that way. Amen. So then we thirdly, we see this as these five calls we are called. See, we're, we're called out of darkness into light. We're called unto fellowship. Then we find, thirdly, we're called to holiness in consecration. Not consecration. I never will forget a fellow teaching Sunday school class one time, and he kept saying, uh, we got to concentrate before we can know, and we got to concentrate before we can. I'm thinking, oh, Lord, help him. Holy Spirit, come by and give him a touch and let him see that word is not concentrate. <laughs> It'll cause you to concentrate. But then finally he saw it, and he said, oh, my goodness. He said, I, miss, I was mispronouncing that. I'm glad he saw it. Amen? 
consecration. What does that mean? That's to holiness. You say, uh-oh, boy, you're getting over in an area where, where I don't know anything about. Most of us don't. But we know what we're doing. I'd rather be caught trying to live holy as to never have tried at all. I want to be caught trying to live. A lot of people say to me, you still trying to do this? You still trying to preach? Lord, I wish you wouldn't say that. That hurts my feelings. You know, when they say that, trying to. And I say, absolutely. Still trying, still learning. Praise God. First Peter chapter 1, verse 15 said, But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. You know what that means? That means your conduct your livelihood, everything about you. You cannot, I heard this said, uh, it ain't been too awful long ago, I've heard it over the years many times, M people own a business and they, they cannot separate their business uh, uh, from their, uh, their Christianity. In other words, they say, well, my business has nothing to do with my Christianity. Oh, what a mistake. What a horrible mistake is made when we have to say, my business takes me this way or, or, or whatever my livelihood is takes me this way, but then I'm a Christian over here. That's impossible. You become a nominal Christian. You become a Christian with baggage. You become, uh, you, you don't know what holiness is. Holiness is in the Lord. Holiness is not in Tom Milam. Holiness comes in the Lord. When I get him, when I'm called unto him in conversion and to communion, praise God, and fellowship, then my consecration, I owe him everything, and I would rather die as to lose my testimony because of something in my life that I'm too stubborn to fix. Amen? Verse 16 says, because in that uh, chapter there, 1 Peter chapter 1, said, as it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. I want to follow him, and I will never be as holy as I ever want to be, not in this body, not in this life, but one day I will know what it's all about. But until then, I'm going to consecrate. In other words, I'm going to separate my life unto him. I am going to set aside as the Holy Spirit sanctifies us, sets us aside to serve. Amen? The Bible teaches us to be you separate, saith the Lord. Come out from among them. Amen? What does that mean? We're of the world. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. We've come out of the world. Our home is up yonder. So our mission work is down here. Our mission work ain't up there. Our mission work is down here. We're not at home here. We're strangers and pilgrims. Here, our home is over yonder. Hallelujah, what a Savior that we have. We're, he teaches us, amen? See, come out among them people that are worldly. See, we're in the world, but we don't live of the world. So, guess what? We must win them that are of the world because we are not of the world anymore. We are to win them that are in the world because we are not of the world anymore. Amen. I'll get it right in a minute. But this, and he, then he tells us in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, that we are to, we're set aside to do what? What are we set aside for? To be a witness. I've heard this so many times. Well, one of these days I'm going to be a witness. Already a witness. We're already a witness. When we name the name of the Lord and accept him as personal Savior, we immediately carry his identification and we are witnesses unto them that are Jerusalem and blah, blah, blah. You know the, there in, in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Amen. But he says, we're not going to be witnesses. We are witnesses. Yeah, man. I can brag on that. I like to brag on the fact that I'm a witness. Now you say, you're not supposed to brag. Well, I don't mean it in such a braggadocious way uh, as, as this worldly way but I'm glad I can brag on Jesus. He did something in me that made me want to do that, where I did not want to do it before I got saved. Amen? I wanted to fit in with the world. Number four, let's look at this as we're coming down to a close. Number four, we have a compensation. You say, oh, what's that? See, there's a result. As, as due to the condition, there's a result. There's a, there's a result happened. What are we talking about a compensation? There's a blessing. 
Everybody likes a blessing. Glory to God, I'm being blessed today. I feel the Holy Spirit. Don't you realize the Holy Spirit today in the Word of God speaking to our hearts? Compensation. Look what 1 Peter 3 and 9 says. Not rendering evil for evil, nor or railing for railings, but contrarywise, blessing, knowing that we are thereunto called, amen, that ye should inherit a blessing. We've got blessings down here because we, we live in heavenly places even while we're down here. We have a holy calling. Praise God. I'm glad to have that. That don't put me a... That don't put me better than anybody else, but it puts me a step ahead, a step ahead, a step ahead. Amen. I want to keep stepping ahead. I don't want to be take two steps forward and fall nine steps back. Sometimes I feel like that sometimes. But I want to be stepping forward, building on a foundation. You build this building, and when this building was built, they didn't knock the foundation down and start over. Oh, no. They built on the foundation. They had the foundation right, and they built upon it. And then we see in this compensation, listen to this. You see, uh, <clears throat> when we think about that, when we inherit this blessing, not only God's chastening hand for rebellion, he gives us a reward of grace and mercy like a checking account where the dividends are out of this world. Amen? That's what he gives us in mercy and grace. See, you write your check on God's account on mercy, grace, love, charity. I can name a whole b- a lot of attributes of God that we get when we get saved. Amen. Don't you want that? That's the compensation. Isn't it a blessing to witness to somebody and see them get saved? Isn't that a blessing when we're in a church service and somebody gets up out of their seat with tears flowing down their face and conviction has struck their hearts and they come forward, they feel so condemned, they realize that they are condemned without the Lord and they come forward. We all get a blessing. Isn't that a great blessing? It's a blessing to preach. It's a blessing to witness. It's a blessing to testify. Hallelujah. What a Savior. God's love is, you've got to remember this now, God's love is negative and positive. Just like us parents. Our children, sometimes we have a negative love for them. What is the negative love? Our negative love says, don't you do that again. God says that over and over to us. Don't do that again. But he says it with a firmness and with a hand of correction. He says it that way. If we're not chastised, we may not be doing anything good. Somebody says, wait a minute, you've got to be doing bad to get chastised. Sometimes God chastises us ahead of time, as my mother and dad did sometime. When one of us got bad out of us four kids, we all got chastised just in case we followed after what that one did. You say, well, that's nonsense. No, it's not either. They set a pattern. They set a pattern. You see what you'll get? Well, guess what? You're all going to get it. <laughs> You say, but I didn't deserve it. But you see, God sees something down the road we don't see. See, his positive love will kick in. We'll be down the road. He'll say, now, six months later, after you were chastised back yonder, God says, you see now why I chastised you back there? I prepared you for this day. And we can say, whoo, glory to God, and fling the sweat off our brow. Amen, that we were worried about nothing. Praise God. So that's that negative and that positive love. But that positive love comes along. He says, I love you with an everlasting love. Glory to God. That's our, that's our heavenly Father. I love you with an everlasting love. And my positive love and a negative love, a, a negative pole and a positive pole make these lights come on. You take one wire off, either the negative or the positive, and you ain't got no lights. I don't care how many times you flip the switch and take a hammer and beat the wall. You ain't going to get no light because the master back at the, pre- at the power plant <laughs> still pumping out the power. You just can't get it. You got unhooked. I'm glad I'm plugged in, amen, and I want to stay plugged in. Then we see the last thing, coronation. Coronation. What does that mean? Where coronation is unto glory. Unto glory. It man for blessing. Praise God, and unto glory. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye hath suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. 
Amen. That's what I say. The coronation will come. Oh, coronation. What a glorious thought about our coronation. Called unto His eternal glory. Hallelujah. Now we come to a close in, in a little bit of a song that I, that I've known for many, many years, just a piece of it, come to my mind while preparing this message. And it goes something like this. Because of him, I'll be up there. Because of him, his glory I'll share. I'll never give up. While, while, while my way grows dim, I'll make it through. Praise God because of him. <laughs> Amen. It's all because of him. People ask, how do I make it through by the grace of God? That's how we get through. We don't get through on our own merits. No, I'll never give up. Amen. Even when my way grows dim, I'll make it through. Praise God because of him. First Peter chapter 5, verse 4. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Amen. That crown of glory. We're unto glory. We can't help but get to glory. Amen. I glory in him. Luke chapter 10, verse 20 says, Notwithstanding of this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your name is written in heaven. Amen. By the blood of Jesus Christ. It's written in red. And I'll say it one more time. Though my body be part and parcel of the earth. And though uh, my body be lost at sea. And nobody ever find my remains. And though I be burned. And nobody even recognize that I'm even a human. Still ain't no grave going to hold this body down. Because he got up. And we're going to get up. That's my Easter message. Hallelujah. What a Savior. Father thank you for the time spent here in this recording. And I pray, Lord, that it'll go do what you would have it to do. Help us ever to serve you and realize that we came totally from darkness. Not only were we in darkness, we represented darkness. We lived in darkness. We moved in darkness. We were long alienated away from all that was good and holy and wonderful. But then that day, that Jesus passed by. Oh, glad day. Thank you, Lord. Save a soul. Strengthen the brethren. Would you, Lord, right now, as someone under the sound of this voice and under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, would you, Lord God, save someone. Help them pull aside on the road or at their home, on their couch, maybe by their bedside, would call on the Lord Jesus Christ right now for salvation. Please, Lord, save me. Forgive me, Lord. I give you myself right now. I'm an old sinner, and I want to be saved by your wonderful grace. Thank you, Lord, for this time spent together in Jesus' name. Amen.